So there I was scrolling Reddit in my Fire Nation boxers when I came across this picture. This is the cast of the live action Avatar The Last Airbender series that's coming out on Netflix. This is Zuko, that's Katara, and that's Aang. The actor who plays Aang is a kid named Gordon Cormier. And dude, he looks so small in this picture. I definitely think he looks like Aang, but I also wouldn't be surprised if you told me he was playing Milo. And it doesn't help that his hat makes him look like a kid dressing up as a rapper for Halloween. You know, it's a good thing that the Avatar can waterbend because he's drowning in that hat, man. But anyway, in the comments of this post, people started talking about Katang and how their age gap is kind of weird, or the pairing of Zuko and Katara being better, and, you know, generally voicing their opinions on the pairing of Katara and Aang. So I thought I'd drop my two cents on the matter. Is Katang a good pairing? So I think the first question you gotta answer when you're talking about romance is, are they developed? Is there enough time and energy given to this relationship? And I'm not gonna waste your time. The answer is yes. And before we get into it guys, if you like my content, please consider subscribing. It helps out the channel a lot. Being the absolute Chad that he is, the first thing Aang does when he's woken up from the iceberg is ask Katara out. And yes, Aang is a Chad. He's super athletic, he's super nice and charming to everyone, and the only time he went to a school, he messed with a school bully, threw a dance party in a cave, earthbended an escape, refused to elaborate, and left. If Avatar was a high school, Zuko would be the emo kid with anger issues, and Aang would be the effortlessly charming, effortlessly popular, charming kid that you just can't bring yourself to hate. Sokka would be the class clown, and Azula would be addicted to Adderall. But anyway, Aang asks Katara out, and they go penguin sliding together. Aang helps Katara reconnect with being a kid, and Katara tells Aang about the world, and is there for him during somber times like when he finds Gyatso's corpse. There is definitely chemistry here. And yes, at first, Katara doesn't see Aang as a romantic partner. But that changes, right? The fortune teller episode happens, they probably kiss in the cave, which Katara suggested. And also, Katara kisses him on the cheek multiple times, which she doesn't do with anyone else. If you can't see romantic potential here, you're more blind than Toph. Now, I know what you Zutara shippers are going to say. You're going to say Katara is the mom friend that takes care of everyone. But there's no reason that someone being caring and loving means they can't develop a romantic attraction. Like, go watch the headband again and watch Chad Aang say, it's, it's just, just you, you and me right, right now. And see how Katara reacts and tell me she still views him like a little brother. If your mom looks at you like that, you're either in a porno or you need to call CPS. The only real criticism that I kind of agree with is age. When it comes to the live action especially, I think it's going to be very weird to see Gordon and Kyo and Tio together. Aang is 12 and Katara is 14. While two years isn't a big deal for adults, that could be a 7th grader and a freshman in high school. But here's another perspective. 12 and 14 could be a 7th grader and a freshman, but it could also be an 8th grader who skipped grade and an 8th grader who's just old for her class. That doesn't sound too bad, does it? Okay, so they have chemistry. The age gap is a little weird, but probably excusable. That means it's all good, right? I don't think so. I know on Tumblr and Twitter, there are a lot of shipping wars, Zutara versus Katang. And I know I was just really complimentary of Katang and the way their development was handled. So I'm sure it'll surprise you to know that in the shipping wars, I actually choose neither. I'm not going to go into Zutara in this video, but I have major problems with the way Katang was handled in book three, especially in the most important episodes of the season. Those are the Day of Black Sun, the Southern Raiders, the Amber Island players, and the finale. So let's start with the invasion. We get Katang's first official kiss here. And we're all proud of Aang for making a move, but do you see Katara's face? Does this look like the face of someone who just kissed her crush? Someone who's happy this happened? No, this is the kind of expression you make when you get into your prom dress for the first time and your mom says you look fat. At the very least, it's one of confusion more than anything else. And I know what y'all are thinking. You're thinking, hey, Monk, you're being nitpicky. This is one thing, one face. You're going to ignore two and a half seasons of development because Katara wasn't sure it was the right time. And fine, I hear you. So let's talk about the next important episode for their relationship, the Southern Raiders. This is the episode where Katara goes with Zuko to confront the man that killed her mother. She tries to take Appa and find him, but Aang stops her. And he's like, he's like preachy McPreacherson. 
he doesn't really make an effort to try to understand and just lectures her about forgiveness. But that's not even the important part of this interaction. The important part is that Katara takes no stock into what he's saying. In fact, she says, I knew you wouldn't understand. Katara doesn't trust Aang with this side of her because their values aren't aligned. There was this amazing fan animation of Hamilton and Avatar, and in that fan animation, Katara thinks of Aang when she hesitates to kill. But in the actual Southern Raiders episode, it's not clear what was going on or why Katara spares him, especially because once she comes back, her and Aang aren't on the same page at all. He says he's proud that she forgave her mother's killer, but she disagrees and says she didn't forgive him at all. I definitely prefer the fanimation version where his ideology rubs off on her and that's why she makes the choice that she does. If this were the biggest problem though, I don't think it would be too bad. Couples don't need to agree on everything. For example, me and my girlfriend have both seen Naruto and we have differing views on Sakura. I think Sakura is annoying and a terrible character, and she thinks, uh, incorrectly. It's okay that you love Sakura, baby, we all have our flaws. But the flaws in Katang's relationship are actually much bigger than mere disagreements. I'm talking, of course, about the Ember Island players, and specifically, this scene. So for those of you that don't remember, here's what happened. Aang basically asks Katara why they're not together, and Katara says it's not the right time, and that she's confused. And in response, Aang does this. I'm just a little confused. All I can say is yikes. Aang doesn't at all respect her wishes and she's clearly very uncomfortable with, with what's happening. Not just verbally, but even with her body language before he forces a kiss. She's hugging herself, looking away. She doesn't want to be having this talk. And in response, Aang does something that is 100% indisputably bad. He expresses regret for sure, but importantly, he doesn't actually apologize to Katara. He just says, I'm such an idiot, to himself. And this is the big problem I have. The next time we see these two interact one-on-one -on -one is their kiss at the end of the season. What changed in between this moment and that one? And the answer is nothing. nothing. Nothing's changed for Katara. There was no resolution of any of her confusion or of their relationship. There's no addressing what he did in the theater. Aang just saves the world, and so he gets the girl. So, short disclaimer. I'm about to make some statements about gender in media here, and I think it's important to qualify them by saying, I am not a woman. I've never experienced the sexism a woman feels, and my understanding of the concepts I'm going to discuss are exclusively based on the two gender studies classes I took in college and my conversations with the many extremely intelligent women I'm lucky enough to be friends with including my incredible girlfriend. So in media, there's a trope called hero gets girl, which basically means the hero of the story saves the kingdom and as a reward gets the princess in marriage. This was historically problematic because it treated the woman like a prize to be won without actually giving her any agency. I don't think Katang is quite as extreme as that example because Katara is a total badass in her own right during the finale. She beats Azula under Sozin's Comet single-handedly. She doesn't lack agency and she's not objectified but she is treated like a prize. Her feelings of confusion and her mixed feelings towards Aang are never fully explored or fleshed out or developed. There isn't any dialogue in this scene that explains her thought process or her emotion. Honestly, this is true for the entire show. We see Aang's feelings on Katara in great detail, but never Katara's feelings on Aang. At least not explicitly. There's chemistry for sure and development, but Katara's romantic affections are treated as something for Aang to win, that her confusion is something that will be solved naturally when Aang defeats the Fire Lord. I think if you're going to have a relationship, it needs to be something built upon respect and understanding. And I think, unfortunately, in the Southern Raiders, they don't understand each other. And in Ember Island Players, Aang doesn't respect her feelings. And beyond that, Katara generally doesn't take any initiative in their relationship or doing anything remotely romantic. I don't think relationships need to be equal. It's very frequent that one partner is a little more into it than the other one. But Katara not having her feelings explored explicitly robs her of agency within the relationship, where her feelings are little more than a problem for Aang to solve. She doesn't even think about him romantically at all until the fortune teller episode, where it's somebody else basically telling her that Aang is an option. 
she doesn't get the opportunity to develop those feelings for herself. So if Katang is handled badly, what's the alternative? I don't know. I don't think Avatar needs romance, although I think a well-handled romance would have been cool to have. I just think the way they handled Katang did a massive disservice to Katara's character. And that's a dang shame. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I make Avatar and anime content every week, so come through, enjoy the ride. Let me know what topic you want me to cover next, and yeah, until next time.